Hi, friends. Welcome to Encouraged and Equipped. On this podcast, we introduce you to the women of Christ Chapel Bible Church. We share our stories to encourage and equip each other to live out our faith in Jesus. We are so glad you're here. On this episode, we hear from three Christ Chapel Women staff members, Camille Adams, Sarah Stiles, and Wendy Lyon. They step boldly and carefully into the tricky topic of anger. Whether you easily see the anger in your life or if it's an emotion you haven't explored much before, we believe you'll be glad you joined in for this conversation. Hi, and welcome to Encouraged and Equipped. I am Camille Adams, and joining me today are Wendy Lyon and Sarah Stiles. Hello. Today, we're going to talk about anger. Um, We'll talk through what tempts us to anger. We'll talk about what's helped us in the past, and we're going to talk about what the Bible says about anger. Um, So I know that we obviously all deal with anger, maybe not on a daily basis. Some of us may be daily. Um, But what we want to talk about today is the fact that we're all impacted by anger and that God really cares about our anger. He cares about the way we feel. Mm -hmm. He cares about what we believe. He especially wants to meet us in our anger and bring us to a place of sanctification or being made holy. Um, He cares about giving us peace, and He wants that relationship with us when we run to Him when we're angry. Um, So let's just jump right in. Um, I'd like to start by saying that I hope our conversation encourages each other, um, and I'd love to know what anger has looked like for you guys in your daily life. Um, So Sarah, would you mind starting us off? Yeah, it's such a fun topic. I know. (laughs) Um, So finding out uh, that I am an angry person was pretty impactful for me (laughs) because I'd always thought of angry people as like the rage monster or someone who's very Hulk-like and has this uncontrolled outburst. But I figured out from, um, I was in a small group a couple years ago, a 12 steps program, and I found out that I'm actually a very angry person, but I keep it hidden um, and kind of like this constant boil, Mm. so well hidden that I didn't even know I was an angry person. So yeah, I realized that my anger was coming from looking at my circumstances as someone has wronged me or I've disappointed myself again. And I had held these unrealistic, perfect standards that could never be fully met. And then that would lead to anger. And in that small group, I learned about my personality's characteristics and Mm -hmm. which helped me know more of the role of anger in my life and how, how many actions were coming from a wrong motivation. Mm. Like it's a good phrase, the wrong motivation Mm -hmm. really kind of helps us to get to the heart of what we're dealing with. I love that you talked about you know, the difference between like a Hulk-like anger and that constant <laughs> yeah. like boil uh-huh. underneath the surface. Yeah, I can identify with that. I can too. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I feel like I have that constant boil and then sometimes I have those days where it feels like the pot has like boiled over mm-hmm. and the stove exploded somewhere <laughs> yeah. along the way. And yeah. it's that really like intense feeling yeah. of anger. Yeah. And I just don't want that anger to boil over and, and hurt somebody else that's close mm-hmm. to me. Um, so yeah, it, whether we're dealing with that constant irritation or day-to-day frustration about things or that explosive anger that kind of builds up and then overflows, it's good to know that whether we're in those days or another kind of situation, God always meets us there perfectly. And the gospel Mm. of grace still applies to both of those things. Oh, yeah. That God's not surprised by our anger in any circumstance. He knows and He wants to be there with us and that He desires to give us peace in those moments. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. Wendy, what about you? What does anger look like in your day-to-day? Well, for me, um, before I did this podcast, I thought, okay, what are things that really make me angry. And there's, there, I felt like there in my life, there are three different levels of angry anger. There's things that happen that I move through and then I get over really quickly. Mm -hmm. And then there's things that are hurtful or some anger I work through takes a little longer. And then there's those deep hurts that I can relate Mm -hmm. to you, Sarah, when you said it's that constant boil that I constantly have to come to the Lord to help me, Mm -hmm. um, help me move through it. But um, I laugh when I think of those things that I just moved through, something that used to irritate me so much and make me angry um, 
was the carpool line. I have three oh. kids, <laughs> mm-hmm. and um, it just popped. This example popped in my head first. So I have three kids, and the elder two um, went to different schools, and then my youngest, we would drop her off first, and I could feel them getting nervous if um, we were late. And so part of it was needing to get them to school on time, the efficiency of carpool line, and. What made me so angry is I thought, okay, there is a parking lot. That is for people who want to take their time and walk their kids in and sign those last minute (laughs) uh, field trip forms and get that last minute hug Mm -hmm. and all those things. And then there's a carpool line. The carpool line (laughs) are for people to just walk out of the car and go into school. And so I would get so mad when I'm behind moms who are filling out those forms and taking their mm-hmm. time. And I just wanted to hot lay on the horn and go, this is the carpool line. You belong in the parking lot, not in the carpool. And what's so funny is that, um, and thank goodness they couldn't hear me and we oh, have windows, yeah. but I have little ears in my car. So I had, yeah. Yep. And my third is a turtle. And so <laughs> now that I have two kids that are um, out of my, don't live, they're adult children now and working, but now I have my youngest turtle and we're the ones signing the last oh, minute forms. It's no. been quite humbling, but I will say I move up further. So I'm out of the way of the other mom. So it <laughs> has taught me to be yeah. more sensitive, but that did, that really oh, irritated yeah. me. I really had to watch myself because I had little ears in the car and how I handled it, um, how I handle my anger matters to God yeah. and it mm. matters to who's um, around me yeah. and listening. Absolutely. So, um, I, I had to watch how I vented. I love uh, Proverbs. There's a verse that uses the word vent, uh-huh. and I love it. It's a, a full vent, his rage, but a wise man holds it back. I know no, mm-hmm. another um, version says a, a full vent, his feelings. And I thought, Ooh. oh, man, I don't want to be a fool in front of my kids, but I was this <laughs> time. So... Mm. I love that verse. It's a good one for me to remember now. Mm-hmm. That is super convicting too, to know yeah. that that's like in the word of God. <clears throat> and yeah. I really need yeah. to listen to that. Yeah. But you had me with that carpool line example. I am so guilty of that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think you're right too, that those seemingly small circumstances can really push us to those mm-hmm. levels where if we don't stop and remember that God calls us to control that anger yeah. instead of letting it control us, yeah. then we really get into the realm of sinning in our anger. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know sometimes I really, I want to give control to that anger because uh-huh. yeah, it just in that moment, it, it's so overwhelming. Yeah. And it's funny that things that do that, like for me, the Wi-Fi being spotty. Oh my gosh. Oh yes. yeah. I mean, yes. I'm working on something and the Wi-Fi goes out and it's like, uh-huh. there's that Hulk, you know, yeah. it's just a real low boil, but then the Hulk comes out and yeah. I, uh-huh. I'll huff and I'll oh, sigh and try and figure out what's wrong. And then I ask somebody to help me. And then I take my frustration out on yes. them. Mine went out yesterday. And so oh. I very much I did. Yes. <laughs> It's just horrible. And it's so hard when we know that our anger impacts other people around us, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, does that resonate with you guys? Oh, oh yeah. Um, I can think, you know, that first example of carpool, I've moved through that. We've moved beyond. I'm not still angry about that. But <laughs> I would say that sec- that brings up a point of a second example I have of um, how it the venting can be destructive to our own personal relationships in com- in the body of Christ and in community. And yeah. um, I remember I had a very dear, dear friend years and years and years ago, and we're still great friends. But mm-hmm. at the time, she was moving away. I was super sad about it. We worked together <clears throat> a long time ago. And so I thought, I'm going to plan a going away party for her and invite all our coworkers and everybody to this this party. I plan to have a um, little encouragement box where everybody wrote verses or um, encouragements on it. I had the specific decorations that were just specific to her. I had wow. it all planned out. And so I kind of gathered uh, my coworkers to get workers together and we planned a day, called her and said, hey, we've planned this party. And before I could get any plans out, she jumped in and took over and said, <gasps> great, here's what I want. I have a special book and I want everybody to sign it. And that's where they write encouragements to oh. me and some verses. And here's here's how I, my favorite flower and here's my favorite food and here's my, Ooh. and plan the whole party. And I, it took every self-control ounce of my body to not just go, what? I planned this party for you. And I was really, really hurt at the time. And 
I was mad. I was mad because I she I felt like she stole my joy, which she didn't mean to. Right. And to this day, um, even if I told her about, she, we would laugh about it. <laughs> we're we're good friends. I don't think she knows, but we're it's all in the past. But that's I feel like a um, different level of hurt beyond the carpool line, and I am so glad I didn't just go off and vent on her because it would have been, um, she, w- she didn't mean that. She right. didn't mean to steal my joy. She was just so excited to be able to see her friends one last time. Yeah. And, um, so I, I think a lot of my anger can really be solved by forgiveness. Mm-hmm. So that's, um, something I always have to go back to is, mm-hmm. Hey, I just really need to work on forgiveness and, mm-hmm and move on. Mm, I love that. I love that you brought that back to forgiveness. I think it's so easy to get carried away, especially Mm -hmm. in the moment. But when you've had some time to kind of look back on it, to really walk yourself back through and figure out like, okay, where did that anger, where did it come from? Yeah, yeah. Because I think a lot of times we we can be surprised by the source of our anger. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sarah, what about you? Where do you think your anger usually like stems from? Mm, Good question. Um, I would say probably from my own personal standards that I set up for myself and then expectations being violated (laughs) um, Mm -hmm. where they're not necessarily expectations that everyone needs to follow. And I also think anger can be divided into two categories of righteous anger and unrighteous anger. Mm -hmm. And when wondering if my anger is righteous or not, which it's usually more of the unrighteous, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but I can ask myself, um, what did it look like for Jesus? Because he's our perfect example. What did it look like when he was angry? Mm -hmm. And I think one of the examples people often go to is the one of him in the temple when he is turning over the tables and it's because people had violated the holy temple Mm -hmm. and he had every right to do that, to do that because Mm -hmm. it was his temple. Mm -hmm. And, but people were selling things in it. And they didn't have the right kind of worship that they were supposed to have. And so um, he's completely holy, yeah. so he can do that. Mm-hmm. I, on yeah. the other hand. <laughs> yeah, not, not so much. No, no, yeah. no only by his holiness. Um, so I don't really have the right to demand my own way. Mm-hmm. And for, for an example of righteous anger that I occasionally do have, mm-hmm. um, I get really mad at trafficking or women being mistreated. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can direct that energy that direct that energy and anger towards then supporting um, like those nonprofits or things in church that help mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. help those women get out of those situations Absolutely. and help keep them safe. Um, Using that a- anger to um, serve the Lord and yeah, mm-hmm. helping. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. Not all anger is bad. <laughs> right. um, but much of my anger does stem from unrighteous things. And a lot of times it comes from being misunderstood. Mm. And I have this, Mm. the anger will well up and I want to just defend myself. And when occasionally this verse will come to mind whenever I am feeling misunderstood and it's from first Peter two 23, and it's referring to Jesus. And it says this, um, whenever they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate when he suffered, he made a threats Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. Wow. And so, I mean, I think about when Jesus was on trial and they were doing all sorts of things to him and he just stood there silently. Wow. Um, he had the discernment when to talk, when not to talk. Mm-hmm. And so that's really good when the Holy, Springs, Holy Spirit brings that to mind. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, okay, this is the time when I stay silent. Mm-hmm. And, but practically... One thing that I find myself getting very angry at um, is people driving in the slow lane. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or driving in the left lane slowly. Yeah. Um, So when you said carpool line, I was like, yes. It pushed the buttons, didn't it? (laughs) But I'm like, okay, there's a lane for slow people. Please move and please use your signal um, as well. Uh, And so, (laughs) but whenever that happens or they cut me off or they're not even going the speed limit, Anytime I feel like my efficiency is hampered, mm, yeah. that is when anger will flare up. Mm-hmm. And the Lord over the years has had to teach me people are more important than my to-do list and my agenda. Mm-hmm. Yes, tasks are important, but if there's a need and someone has a need, 
go that first and mm-hmm. be willing to be interrupted. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's another verse that will, will come to mind, and it's from James. And um, James says this, Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must be all quick to listen, slow to speak, and, clo- and slow to become angry. Human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Mm-hmm. And piggybacking off of this, if we're called to be like him, then um, he, the Lord himself had described himself to Moses as um, the Lord, the Lord, a God, merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Um, so it's just, those are just some scriptures that the spirit will bring to mind um, that I can heed. Yeah. <laughs> I choose yeah. to do so. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Could I... Could I circle back to something you said earlier, Sarah? You yeah. had mentioned that you sometimes get angry because of like personal expectations. Mm, yes. Is that something that you can speak some truth to? Sure. Um, so yes, I get angry with myself mm. most often. That's where that constant boil is. And mm. it's because I hold the standard of perfection for myself mm. in every little thing, whether how I'm sitting or how I'm looking at someone and mm. like every little thing. And when I don't hit that expectation every time, I get angry at myself, yeah. which the Lord himself doesn't even hold me to that standard. Right. And so, you know, it could be missing an alarm in the morning or eating out again when I should have had the food Ooh, um, yeah. at home. Yeah. <laughs> and essentially what I'm doing in that is I'm in my perfection. I'm seeking satisfaction in the works that I do mm-hmm. more than seeking satisfaction in the Lord. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and God will give me, God gives me more grace than Mm -hmm. I give myself. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. That really resonated with Mm. me quite a bit. Yeah. I can remember, um, getting really frustrated with myself when my oldest kiddo was an infant Mm -hmm. and those days were just so, so difficult and that's circumstantial, right? I would just get so angry and so frustrated that Mm -hmm. No matter what I did, it didn't soothe him. It wasn't the right thing. And I worked so hard to try and figure it out. But it was that constant spinning in my wheels and the inefficiency and really setting up those unrealistic expectations that I would be able to perfectly meet his needs every single time, every hour of the day um, that really wore on me. I just got so angry and I felt so alone and so ashamed because I really thought, I was the only woman in the world who was feeling this intense anger Mm -hmm. about my baby. And Mm -hmm. I I wish somebody could have just taken me and said, you're Mm -hmm. not the only one, first of all, because I think a lot of of people deal with that. And I think even if you can't relate to the, maybe you loved the infant stage and you were just in bliss all the time holding (laughs) your quiet sleeping baby. That doesn't exist. But also, like, (laughs) if you're caring for, like, a loved one who's declining in their health or caring for an elderly um, parent, I think you can relate to that as well, that you you feel so helpless and Mm -hmm. you feel like everything you're doing, you are just out of control. And for me, that was really the crux of it, that I wanted to control those circumstances. Mm -hmm. I wanted to meet things perfectly. I, in my Mm -hmm. own strength, Mm -hmm. wanted to pull everybody up and fix it in yeah. the way that I thought was going to be best. Yeah. Hmm. And that wasn't the case. And I wish so deeply now that I had had the wisdom to just run to the Lord and mm-hmm. like tell him how angry I was feeling and confess that desire mm-hmm. for my will instead of his that yeah. I was holding on to so tightly. And I mm-hmm. could have had that closeness with him and experienced the grace and the mercy that he could have poured out on me. And it would have drawn me that much closer to him in those mm-hmm. moments. And instead, I just stubbornly dug in my heels and mm-hmm. kept trying to fix it. Um, and I just spiraled into that anger further and further. Um And now, of course, now it's good to look back on it and say like, oh, God's grace just carried me. Like it just Mm -hmm. carried me through those days and I'm grateful for it. Um, And now I can look back on it more clearly and see that, wow, it wasn't, it wasn't the circumstances. I can't blame it on the anger. What I can blame it on rightfully is my pride. And I can blame mm. it rightfully on my desire to control things and really idolizing what I thought was the best answer. And then I can move forward in, in repentance and really experience that peace that, that He mm. desires to give us. 
That's good. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people listening to are going to be encouraged mm-hmm. and realize I'm not the only one. I, know. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's sad that we're not, I wish yeah. that I was the only yeah. one. I wish that nobody else had to deal with that, but yeah. 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 Um, you know, it seems often that we think of situations in which we would have mm. acted a certain way yes. and dealt with anger differently. What do you think that we can do to uh, with our anger in the moment? Because it is so hard to stop in the moment and be like, mm-hmm. okay, calm down. Yeah. So do you have any tips on when you're in that moment of anger that we can move forward with more of a putting that anger out in a more healthy mm-hmm. way? Uh, Wendy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I think... <laughs> Gosh, Camille, I, back to your story, I went through the same thing with my kids, and it just – babies, when you're inside and you haven't mm-hmm. had a shower and you haven't had sleep and your baby's crying and it feels like everything is out of control. And I remember being angry at myself and thinking, why can't I handle this better? Yes. So yeah. um, I I think to answer your question, Sarah, is um, that those situations are normal. It's just – first, just – because I was hard on myself too, and I still yeah. am so hard on myself. I mm-hmm. totally agree with you. I get angry with myself for not handling things better, but yeah. um, we're just sinful, flawed people, and it's normal mm-hmm. to feel angry. It's mm-hmm. okay to feel angry. Um, I just think what we do with it is right. how is, um, uh, and that's what you're asking. How yeah. we uh, Camille answered that. We go to the Lord. Um, I know for me. Um, I love the slow boil illustration. Mm-hmm. I would think of like a popcorn popper. It just keeps oh, yeah. filling and Ooh. it just the top blows off and it just explodes. <laughs> yes. yeah. And I tend to shut down and just, mm-hmm. I just can't deal with it. So I just walk away because I don't know what to, how to deal with yeah. my anger. So I don't know if I have a really good question, but I do know um, sometimes when I have that slow boil in, in me every day, I go to the Lord and it's there, and I ask God to show me how to move past that mm. anger. And I do okay for a day, and the next day it's there again, mm. and then the next day it's there again, and I just keep going back to the Lord and back to the Lord. And I get frustrated with myself. Why haven't I moved yeah. through this? Or God, why haven't you taken this away? Um, but it continue. I especially the longer the anger has gone on, and the more it's <clears throat> that deeper it's in there, the more longer I, I just go back to them day after day and understand that I cannot deal with that slow boil by myself. I can't. Mm-hmm. I have to ask the Holy Spirit to help me. Mm-hmm. And it's just going back to them day after day after day after day. And it in those moments, mm-hmm. it, it did get easier. Yeah. And I did see yeah. Him change me, and not because of anything I did except go to Him. He changed, mm-hmm. my, changed mm-hmm. my heart. That's good. So. I love that. Can I jump in real quick? Yeah. One thing I um, noticed with something that you said is so many of these examples are have to do with control mm-hmm. of why can't I control myself better or mm-hmm. why can't someone else control themselves? Mm-hmm. That's and a good point. Mm-hmm. I love that you said I have to go back to him again and again because mm-hmm. realizing he's the one that's in control that's and he gives us grace. Mm-hmm. So, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I love that it's almost like you're training yourself to like in those moments, like this is what I do. I go to the Lord and tomorrow when it happens again, I go to the Lord and it's that discipline and practice of doing that and going to the Lord. Yep. And I know for me, like I will notice the longer I've done that, like the more days and weeks and months that I've (laughs) like gone to him, Mm -hmm. the more he trains me and meets me. And Mm -hmm. I can look back now. And like the other night when I was putting my kid up to bed and there was a lot of disrespect and my immediate mm. response is that anger welling up and I want to explode and I remember and the Holy Spirit calls it to mind that God mm. miraculously gave me patience the other day. Like I didn't respond in anger and it yeah. wasn't because I was so perfectly self-controlled. It was just His goodness and grace to His me. goodness and grace, yeah. exactly. And we get to remember those things and those are the things that motivate us, I think, and that draws us closer to Him. So we want to go to him in those moments. That it's kind of like that cycle. Like the more he gives me, the more I want him, and the more he gives me, and right. the more I want him. Maybe there's and, a reason why it's fruit of the spirit and yeah, self control because yeah. he's the one that has yes. to bring it. And it's the uh, your reaction is can only be explained by the goodness of God. I mean, yeah. we know that every day <laughs> yes. we wake oh, yeah. up and we're dealing with that anger, and we mm-hmm. w- 
want, we're drawn to venting in an yeah. unhealthy way, yeah. and it can only ex- be explained by His goodness in our life. Yeah. yeah. Wendy, you were talking earlier about forgiveness. I know for me, that's a, such a huge, mm-hmm. huge buoy to me in my hope that um, I, it wasn't by accident. It was, of course, the Lord's will that the previous month I had had a memory verse from Psalm 103, and it talks about God being slow to anger and abounding mm-hmm. and steadfast yeah. with mercy. And I knew that He was giving me that for a reason, and I was memorizing it for a very real purpose, and that was because I had been dealing with some anger. Yeah. Um, but I love how that, just that little chunk of verses right there, it leads from God being slow to anger. And we know that his anger is righteous anger yeah. at our sin, right? Mm-hmm. And it moves from there into this beautiful picture of so high are the heavens above the earth. That's how far and deep he has removed our transgression from us. And as far as the East is from the West, mm-hmm. does he remove our sin from us? And I just love that he ties and anchors that hope of being steadfast and slow to anger. And he doesn't treat us in that anger anymore because he's been the one to remove that sin from us. And so because we're in a right standing with him, he gets to, he gets to dote on us Mm. instead of treating us like an angry father because he's dealt with it perfectly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's such a great picture to remind me of that forgiveness. And then I can move forward in humility, a right picture of myself in front of him. And that moves me to to forgiveness for others or forgiveness Mm. from him. That's really good. Man, that's good. You know, thinking of another angry example, because I have so many, (laughs) I would just love to share. (laughs) We've all realized how angry we really are working on this podcast. Oh, my goodness. Um, One is a recent example of... (laughs) Uh, a relationship that didn't work out and I felt extreme disappointment and even a tinge. I had one friend ask me, are you angry at him or at God? And um, I was like, no, but then one day it hit me and yeah. And I took it to the Lord and very much, why didn't this work out? Mm. Um, This does not make sense in my mind. And that's really when I have to take it to him of, okay, God, you're in control. I know that you're in this and I know that you said no. So I'm giving it to you. Mm -hmm. And if it ever pops up again, I'll just bring it. Like you were saying, I have to go back to him Mm -hmm. again and again. And it's realizing um, that he is the one that's in control. And I think of Romans 11 at the end, it says that his ways are higher than our ways. And, you know, who can discern them? And so that's one that I go to often and just realizing, you know, I don't have to be in control and I'm not called to know everything and why everything works out the way that it does. Um, and I also love that, uh, you know, the chapters where Job is talking with the Lord or more of like the Lord is talking to Job. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, Job is listened to how the Lord is in control of this and this and this and this. And he essentially says, my bad. I didn't know what I was talking about. (laughs) Yeah. That's a convicting. Yeah. 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 And you know, and I can bring my emotions and anger to the Lord because He already knows what's in my heart. Mm-hmm. And He, when I bring it to Him, He's able to calm me down and redirect my perspective mm-hmm. into one that is more holy. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I love that, Sarah. I, I think, and to answer your question too about dealing with anger, I didn't mention this before, but um, how you went to Job and I went to Psalms and when mm-hmm. David talk to God, God already knew the anger in his heart towards the injustices of the world and yeah. the evil. And he just he just let him have it. I mean, he just said, I why don't you take take vengeance on on these yeah. evil people? I, mm-hmm. God, where are you? Why don't you act? And um my soul is is desperate. And he just poured his heart out to God. Yeah. yeah. And that gave me a great blueprint and model in how to talk to God through my anger that he yeah. he takes it and he he gets it. He's not going to punish me for that. Yeah. But in the middle of those Psalms, uh, Dave said, until, there's always a break where he says, until I entered the sanctuary mm. of the Lord or until I came into the presence of the Lord mm. and gave and, and bowed before him and listened to the Lord. And at the end, you see a changed heart and he's praising oh, wow. God and he's changed his heart. And I think, okay, yeah. I can pour it all out to God. Everything I'm angry about, and come before him, and he can change my heart, and I can trust him to do that. Mm. Um, but it's it's tempting to call a friend and Ooh, talk yes. and vent on the phone, <laughs> and that's just the wrong way to yes. not a good choice. Yes. So um, 
I, I love that Lord gave us a big giant book of Psalms to use <laughs> as a, a model of how to handle yes. those situations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I think it's a good picture, like you were saying, of calling out to the Lord instead of calling out to a friend. Because yeah, I, when I call to a friend, I I want to be validated. And yeah. oh, absolutely, mm-hmm. yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. when I come to the Lord, like. He's going to diffuse it. Yeah. And that's, that's really what we <laughs> yeah. all, that's we what all we need. need that, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what we've talked about anger. We've talked about what the Bible says about anger. We've talked about training ourselves to run to the Lord. But yeah. like really practically, what are some things that you guys do to really in those moments where you feel like this is it, I'm at the popcorn's at the top of the bucket, like it's coming out. What yeah. is it that you do? Anything helpful? Yeah. Well, there is one example of, I was thinking about, oh, I could vent to someone about this. And uh, it has to do with someone who's really close in my life. And I often ask myself, you know, why, why does this person act this way again and again and again? Mm. And the only thing that changes my anger in those moments is forgiveness. Um, and it's going back to the Lord and seeing, okay, if, if God, a completely holy God, is this way. Should I not extend grace to this person again and again and again? And that helps me then from going to others who could validate my feelings and instead going to him and his grace um, and seeing that, you know, it's okay if I let this go again and offer love instead. I love that, Sarah. That's a really wise response. Yeah. I often don't make, but I'm glad you said it because now it will remind me that <laughs> yeah. I can, we can trust the Lord. Yeah. He's good and big and powerful. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, jump in here again real yeah. we'll quick. Um, I, going back to the 12 steps group mm-hmm. that I was a part of, um, it was awesome because it was led by counselors. It was like free counseling almost. <laughs> um, and she helped me understand my anger so well. And she had this, um, really good explanation of how anger can work in regulating um, our Mm -hmm. anger. Mm -hmm. And she called it the window of tolerance. So essentially there's this area window of tolerance that when you're in that window, your emotions are regulated. You're able to respond Mm -hmm. um, logically and in the way that you're supposed to. Mm -hmm. But when you get out of that window, like with anger or, um, anxiety, or you can also be under the window with like depression. And when all that happens, you logically cannot respond in the way that you're supposed to respond. Mm. And so that helped me a lot. Um, whenever I realized, okay, when I'm in a frame of mind that is angry, Mm -hmm. then I need to regulate, regulate myself, step away for a minute Mm -hmm. or just do something to where I can then get back into that window of tolerance and, then start loving people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree with that. We to think clearly and to. I have this popcorn popper or that boiling uh, yeah. on that going, and I cannot think clearly. I will make uh-huh. poor decisions yep. every single time. So for me, it's a physical thing on in a very practical way. I need to exercise. I need to do something physical. Physical. I need to get outside. I need to use my muscles. And it's amazing how that will diffuse some yeah. of that anger. So I can think clearly. So I can hear God clearly. So I can talk to Him clearly and not just be a big ball of emotion. So oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's just a practical way. And it's something I can do. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. That helps a ton. Yeah. You know, I had to learn how to breathe again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like, yes. You're like, yeah. you'd think I'd have this figured out by now as an adult. No. But I noticed too, uh, you mentioned just being active. Mm-hmm. So um, there was a part there was a time in my life when I wanted to get back into this that I would, um, I took up boxing and it was so much <gasps> fun. So cool. Yeah, I hit, I hit bags, not people. <laughs> Although, <laughs> um, and I noticed that that would even help me get out some anger yeah. and stuff. Mm-hmm. And afterwards, Absolutely. it would, it was just a healthy way to, to work through things. Yeah. So yeah. 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 Bags, not people. That's a good, uh-huh. yeah, that's a good motto. <laughs> that's what we should right? call this. Bags, not people. <laughs> Oh, Sarah, you were saying I had to learn how to breathe again, and this is helpful for me. So please hear me say that this is not, yeah. this is for me, helping me, but I have to teach my kids 
breathing techniques because Mm -hmm. when they are angry, they're not in that window of tolerance and they are certainly not logical at that moment. Mm -hmm. They're very logical at other times, but I teach them like, okay, today we're going to blow up a balloon and you know, you put your hands over Uh your mouth and like that, or we hold up five fingers and you try to blow out five candles, um, or you breathe like a lion, things like Mm -hmm. that. Or we do like wall push-ups to try and Mm -hmm. do that. But I find myself like, uh, Camille, you've got to blow up that balloon. (laughs) You got to, okay, yeah. how we can deal Mm -hmm. with this. Yep. Yep. And sometimes just like you were saying, like I take myself outside, like moving my body from one place to being outside really for some reason just helps mm-hmm. helps me to calm down. It breathe, brings things down a little bit. The volume changes, the scenery changes, and it puts myself in a yeah. different perspective to help. And do you ever think that those uh, techniques you're teaching your kids is the technique they're going to use to deal with you yourself? And <laughs> Oh, Wendy. And, uh, <laughs> and even, I, I do. I think, uh, she's yeah. mom, I got to go <laughs> breathe that to deal with my mom. Or just friends mm-hmm. that, you know, even my examples I'm using that yeah. maybe they're doing a podcast and using oh, me yeah. as illustration. So yeah. it's just, it all it all goes around and comes around. We all need Jesus to help us oh, so deal, with, Blow deal with anger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to take on the temperature on our popcorn poppers. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Right. Oh, you guys, I've loved this conversation so much. Um, I'm so grateful for both of you being willing to share your stories about anger um, and to really be honest about it because I think it's great that we encourage each other in those ways. And now I have so many great tips and wonderful little pictures in my head of Sarah punching a punching bag. Mm-hmm. And Wendy, Bags, not people. That's right. right. And Wendy's little turtle in her car. Yeah, so I can right. remember those things. <laughs> Um, it's so good that we get to have these tools and God equips us perfectly for the work in front of us. So True. yeah, I'm going to close this in prayer and I'm going to be thankful for you guys. Um, God, our Father, you are so good to us. Um, you are with us, that you know us so deeply and you care deeply about the way that we relate to you and the way that we relate to each other. Um, I ask that you would remind us of your truth, remind us that you've met us perfectly with your grace, that you um, can move us lovingly in obedience to you. And we ask humbly that you would continue to teach us how to trust you to diffuse our anger in your perfect timing. Help us move us to love one another with patience and forgiveness. And we ask all this in the beautiful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.